Hello and welcome to a new video about safety. Last time we talked about guards, so protective devices which separate the operator and the danger area, the danger zone physically. Now we're talking about non-physical barriers. Yeah? Now we're talking about simply safety systems which do operate contactless, without physical interaction. So safety things which only separate the area yeah and <sighs> hello and welcome to a new video about safety last time we talked about guards which separated the operator and the danger zone physically now we're talking about protective devices where no physical barrier is there. Yeah? Now we're talking about protective devices which do work uh, berührungslos, so without, without physical barriers simply. Yeah? Those protective devices are usually used where we need easy access to the system yeah? and where there is no hazards coming from the machine itself, like inst there is no fumes or, or, or stuff, hazardous stuff like like uh, dust or something like this, like grinding or, or, or welding yeah? or maybe radiation from the process itself, if this is not yeah? and we just have to block something out of a danger zone because there is movement or something that can get hot, it can get cut or hit or whatever, yeah? then this non-touching protecting protective devices are an option okay so uh, usually there there are there are light curtains or camera systems or something like this which do protect a danger zone huh? let's say here's the danger zone because in there there is some robots or whatever working here is the danger zone. Danger zone. I always have to think about Kenny Loggins if I say this word. Top Gun. Here's the danger zone. This needs to be protected. It must be sure that nobody is inside there. Yeah? So usually what those, those protective devices do is they usually make some sort of invisible fence or something like this around. Yeah? So there are items which do control the area around. Yeah? Like light curtains or something like this. If I'm coming close to the danger zone, it will be turned off. Huh? The movement, the dangerous movement inside there. Yeah? So I need to have here a certain distance from the danger zone. Okay? This is a safety distance here. The safety distance itself, yeah, it depends a little bit on the reaction time of the system, so there is a T1 time, reaction time, of the system, of the safety system itself. Yeah. Then there is a second reaction time, the reaction time of the machinery there. Yeah. Reaction time. of the machinery. Okay. And then there's of course the velocity somebody is able to get in. Yeah. If we make this way, or make it's a different. <laughs> so there are standards for this. Yeah? There are standards for this. Uh, so there is for instance the EN 999. Yeah? This defines gripping of 
grip in uh, into the danger zone, then we can reach around two meters per second. Uh, walking. 106 meters per second. This is the, the values for the velocity. Uh, so this is k, the velocity. How fast we can move into the danger zone. Uh. Now you see the standards. Yeah? It does not mean, I don't know, the fastest man alive, the flesh, cannot hurt himself because he is simply too fast for the standard. Doesn't mean. Or if you really grab him very fast, yeah, if you are a fast grabber, <laughs> then you also can hurt yourself. Yeah? The, the, the machines are usually designed for standard. And the standard are, there are standards how thick is a finger, how far I can move in, how, how far is my movement there. There are simply, simply standards. Yeah? If you have unusual I'd say the standards cover 95% of, of the applications. Yeah? If you have unusual attributes of your body, yeah, then you, you always have to take care about yourself. Yeah? So, those two things, yeah? the speed multiplied by the reaction time, the sum of the reaction time, would get already the the safety distance, right? Wrong. Because there's also the possibility on some systems that they can grab a little bit through through the safety, you know? If there is somewhere a curtain, yeah? light curtain, and here are the light points yeah? which do fence this, there is also a distance here, yeah? there's a distance here, and I can stick my finger through, and I'm not at the distance of the curtain, I'm a little bit closer. Okay? So this is the maximum approximation I can do without triggering the safety element. Yeah? This is then has to be added, this C, this maximum approximation to the danger zone without triggering the element itself. So this is the usual distance from the danger zone. Okay? That's it. Yeah? You have a protective device which is scanning the surroundings usually. Yeah? usually a lot of times only the surroundings. Yeah? to prevent somebody go into the danger zone. Okay? We have to take additional measures. Yeah? We have to take additional measures for stepping behind, for instance. Yeah? So if there is here somewhere the wall, yeah? I have to make sure nobody can climb no, no body can step behind the, the security measures without being noticed. So I have to put here some guards or something like this, some fences. Yeah, it's not that easy. You know, it's not, it's not that easy because you know sometimes those security things they cover an area. Yeah? Let's say. You have mounted something at the top of your building, yeah, and it's covering things like this. Yeah? This is the cover area of my security devices. Here is the floor, yeah. The floor. And in between here, this height, this has to be a certain height, so then I, that I cannot just grip over the protective curtain. Okay, this is also this stepping behind is simply to, to think about ways how we can get into the danger zone without triggering this. Yeah? 
So like I said, this is obvious that I close this. But here you think you have covered the whole range here. Yeah? However, in between there might be a, a leak yeah? because somebody can simply grip over the protective fans because at exact this position this is possible and hurts itself. Yeah? Or maybe you have a maximum range yeah? and then it looks like this. And then you might have here a program that somebody can crawl underneath. That's an issue. Stepping behind is an issue. We really have to take care about this. That this is, this is not possible when designing. designing. Uh, also, if the security device was triggered, we really have to make some, some acknowledge button or something like this, reset button, acknowledge button, that we cannot just, because it's no longer triggered, we cannot just start again to work. Yeah? Because then somebody would be able to walk through, yeah? then it's triggered, then he's in the danger zone, he or she is in the danger zone, this person, and because the safety curtain now is functioning again, it automatically starts. Pooh. This would be dangerous, right? So there must be somewhere a reset button, and this reset button is outside the danger zone, of course. So I can only press the reset button by not being in the danger zone. So this is for restarting the process. This needs to be done. Not no automatic restart. Important. Okay? Sometimes I have the need to get goods in and out the danger zone. Eh? And sometimes these things are automated, eh? because this, oh, we live in an automated world, and, and there's automatically raw materials going in and, and, and ready and processed goods coming out. Okay? I have to find a way how to get those things through my security safety barrier. Eh? This thing is called muting. Yeah? So there is also muting. I mute the safety barrier or a part of the safety barrier exactly big enough that I can get my goods through. Yeah? This muting stuff, this muting sensors and so on, which is triggering this muting, they really have to take care that you do think about how that it's not accidentally accidentally triggered uh, by a person you walk in there the automated system thinks you're raw material <laughs> yeah. it's muting the fence the security area and you just walk into the danger zone this should not happen yeah. one possibility yeah, if there is a conveyor belt or something like this bringing new new stuff yeah so there is a parcel. This is the good. Then you could do two light barriers. Yeah? And only if both are triggered almost at the same time, you can mute. Here is the protective area. Yeah? Here is the the light fans or whatever, this stuff here, yeah? and only if both are triggered at the same time, because this parcel triggers both at the same time, then I can turn this temporarily off, let it in, turn it on again. If somebody is just walking there, he will for sure first break this and then this, yeah? or not at the same time. If this is happening, you are not allowed to turn off the... So this is one example of how you could do muting and be sure, almost sure, that nobody can go inside. I know if somebody understands how this is working, we will talk about manipulation of safety equipment. Some videos after this. Then we will hear what are the motivations to, <laughs> to go into the danger zone and try to, oh, to, to get rid or try to beat the, the safety equipment. 
Okay? So that's it. Stepping behind, issue, take care that you restart only after pressing a button, acknowledge or, or restart button and mute muting function should only be able to trigger if there is really a need to mute. Okay. Usual things which are used here. Yeah. One of the simple things on, on how to get away from the danger zone is a, a two-hand operation. Okay. This is very regular. Yeah? You put in something in the area, yeah? then you have press two buttons, left and right, yeah? book, and then it's processed. Yeah? And once you leave one button, yeah? it stops processing because then you have the danger to grip in. Okay? Two hand operation, quite easy. Yeah? There is not nothing like this fencing and so on. Then there are, of course, laser scanners. Laser scanners, you know, they, there's a laser point scanning the area and whenever it's reflected, it knows something is inside. Working a little bit like these light barriers we talked about. Laser scanners. Yeah. Laser scanners, uh, then there are also now pretty new radar, radar scanner. These radar scanners, they are Laser scanners uh, you can usually also be disturbed by, by uh, light which is not coming from themselves. Yeah? So if there is sunlight or something like this, laser scanners might do have issues. Yeah? Radar scanners are better in that. Yeah? They are more disturbed from, from some other materials. Yeah? So they have their own benefits and so on. You really have to look into the application. Yeah? The radar scanners usually have this issue with the with the opening. Yeah. Laser scanners they just move pretty pretty far. Two and operating op operator, laser scanners, radar scanners. Then there are also camera systems. Yeah. Which simply film the whole danger zone. That's pretty nice of them, yeah, because they know how usual the usual behaviors or the usual movements inside look like yeah? and if there's an unusual behavior they will trigger yeah? so these are a lot of camera systems are really looking at the whole danger zone and not only fencing so this this stepping behind and so on this is a little bit easier however they are expensive more expensive okay and then there are mats this is not blue Right? Switching. Floor mats. So you put a mat on the bottom. Yeah? If somebody steps on, there are two layers inside those mats. Yeah? And if somebody steps on, these two layers are contact and you have contact. Yeah? So, switching maps, yeah? just, just reacting on the white of somebody going there. Yeah? You put them on the ground. Not too long ago, those mats, looking black usually, yeah? those mats were for the automated doors in supermarkets or, or stores and so on. There were always those mats on the floor. You stepped on the mat, boom, the door opened. Okay. Now, meanwhile, they are with radar scanners or laser scanners or something like this. Usually, there is something on the top of the floor. Yeah. I mean, this is for opening. This is for muting. This is actually for muting and and door sliding door. Mute. I am the raw material in the store. I'm the raw material. If I come out, I'm I'm done. Huh? <laughs> Those mats, they do have some disadvantages, you know. Some are not resistant to oil, yeah? some who are resistant to oil, then they are quite stiff and then they are not switching proper uh, and, and they might 
age and so on. So these switching floor mats, they are simply, yeah, you can use them, yeah? but other modern systems are were invented for overcoming the issues of the switching floor mats. Okay. So non-touching protective devices yeah, in combination with guards to prevent the stepping behind and so on, this is, can be a safety concept. Okay, like I said, you have to keep the distance yeah, and be aware of all those stuff yeah, and also uh, for restarting. For restarting. Yeah. Restarting is already the topic of our next video. Yeah. Next time we are going to talk about how we can prevent an, an unintended start. Yeah. Who says that a machine is only only dangerous if it's in operation. There is a potential danger also if it's in stop. Yeah? We are going to talk about this next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.